Those are processes that break down rocks. What happens when those sediments are formed? How are they moved from one place to the next? Well, any process that moves sediments, and that could be wind, water, even flows of ice. So if you think about glaciers, because glaciers flow down the sides of a mountain, they interact with those sediments and put them in motion, a process known as sediment transport. For the most part, grain size is going to determine how far or how often a particular sediment may be moved. In the example of blowing dust, low energy environments can suspend very small particles. Higher energy environments are needed to move those larger particles. Of course, something like a glacier plowing down the side of a mountain can pretty much move whatever it wants. Same with a bulldozer. Okay. Sediment transport by wind and water also sort the sediments out so that the sediments that go the farthest, as you might expect, are the smaller sediments. So if a particular flowing water moves sand, the larger grains are going to stay closer and the smaller grains are going to be transported further away. And if we think about locally, Here's our mountains. This is Addison Field, where the world-famous World Series winning Anaheim Angels play. I guess they're the Los Angeles Angels now. You can see these muddy waters. This is during a period of extreme rain a couple years ago. And it brings and carries sand from the mountains all the way towards the Pacific Ocean. This is an example of sediment transport. The speed at which water or wind flows causes sediment grains to move so the speed at which the flow of wind or water causes those grains to move is called the threshold velocity so if a boulder is standing there and not moving it hasn't reached its threshold velocity yet but as that water flows or as the wind blows when those particles of sediment begin to move that's called the threshold velocity there are three types of things that happen to a sediment as a result of the flows of winds or waters. A sediment grain may roll, it may hop, a process called saltation, or it may actually pick up and be suspended by the, f the moving fluid, the process of suspension. Here we have a figure from the book, figure 513, that illustrates all these different processes. So as sediments are deposited in, and this could be a river or an ocean current, they may roll, they may slide, they may tumble, they may hop, process called saltation. And there's some really good websites. If you look up sediment saltation in Google, there's some really nice images of saltation happening. It may actually even then be suspended and carried away. And so, if we look also at the kinds of sediments that might be rolled or slide or slid by moving water, we're going to think the larger particle sizes like gravels. Saltation and even suspension is going to be in the smaller size classes. So through the process of moving water, through the process of even winds, particles sort out according to their size and the sorting of water, of sediment samples, or how well sorted sediment samples are, tells us something about how long they spent in a given fluid flow, whether that flow was water or wind. Okay, so if we look at a sample of sediments, and we do this in our labs, we can look at and ask, are the sediment grains all of the same size, or are they of different sizes? What is the distribution of sizes in that particular sample. That's something we call the grain size distribution. So the individual's grain of sand or grain of sediment, do we have many different kinds of sizes or do we have just one or two kinds of sizes? So the longer the fluid acts, as I said, the greater the likelihood that grains of different sizes are going to be carried to different locations. That process by which water and wind separate particles according to their size is called sorting, 
just like you might do sorting your laundry. You sort it into the socks and the undies and the shirts and the shorts and those kinds of things. Okay? So, where we find sediment deposits whose sediment grains vary in size, so we have lots of different sediment grain sizes, those are poorly sorted. If we find sediment samples with sediments all of a very similar size, we call that sample well sorted. Here we have an example of many different kinds sizes of rocks. This is down in Bahia Gonzaga, Baja California, a place uh, that we used to travel to, not so much in recent years, but here you see sands and rocks and boulders all combined together, poorly sorted. Here we have a number of rocks on a beach, and for the most part, if we just look at the rocks themselves, they're all the same size. Now, of course, these rocks are resting upon finer sediments, but this would be an example of a well-sorted rocks. And these are rocks that have been sorted through the actions of waves and currents on these particular beaches. Okay, the size of a grain also determines how fast it will sink. Throw a boulder in the ocean, it's going to sink to the bottom very fast. Throw sand, slower. Dust or silt and clay sized particles are going to uh, sink even slower in the ocean. And the rate at which they sink is particularly smaller particles such as phytoplankton, the, the plant plankton that we find in the ocean, varies according to something called Stokes' Law. And it's not so important that you understand the details of Stokes' Law, but just so you know that we can mathematically model how fast sediment may sink, at least under conditions of you know, still water and other kinds of assumptions that we make, we can get some idea at least of what the maximum amount of time it would take or the minimum amount of time it would take for a particular size grain of sediments to sink to the bottom if nothing else happened. And so there are mathematical formulas that we can use to figure out how long sediments remain in suspension. Now, of course, if a sediment is in suspension for longer, so if we have clays and silts, well, that means they can be acted upon by currents. So again, finer sediments are going to be carried further away and further out to sea than sediments that are larger in size. And the same thing holds true for wind as well. Wind is going to blow sand, but that sand's going to stay near the shore. But those silts and clays may travel hundreds, if not thousands of miles out to sea. Okay?